Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and welcome to this new tutorial on working with WebSockets in Go. Now, WebSockets are something I find really interesting in the sense that they provide us with an alternate option to communicate between applications as opposed to the standard RESTful API solution. Now, with Sockets, we can do cool things such as real-time communication between thousands to hundreds of thousands of different clients without having to incur the expense of hundreds of thousands of additional REST API calls hitting our servers every minute. As always, the full text version of this tutorial can be found on my website, and I'll be leaving a link to it in the description below. So before we get started, let's have a look at a real life example. Now, this will hopefully put into perspective and show you how important WebSockets can be as a communication medium. Imagine we had a chat application that got all of the latest messages from a single server and pushed all new messages to that same server. So, in order to maintain a real-time chat, you would have to pull the REST API in a traditional application, and that would provide any new messages when and as they occur. This would equate to roughly 60 REST API calls per minute per client. Now, this is the important bit. Now, if we were to build a successful service and we start seeing more and more traffic hitting our application, our servers would start to become inundated with handling the millions of REST API calls per minute. Now, let's consider the scenario in which we used WebSockets instead of REST API calls. Each client would maintain one solitary connection to the server. Now, with a thousand clients, this would equate to roughly a thousand socket connections. If someone was to post a new message, only then would our server push out an update to the other 999 clients. With this method, we have severely minimized the amount of network traffic hitting our server. We've saved costs on the number of instances of our server application that we would subsequently have to run if our application was to become more successful. And consequently, we'd be able to handle thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of clients with minimal additional effort. Now, in order to implement WebSockets in Go, we have a number of different options to choose from. As I come from a mainly front-end background, one of the most prevalent libraries for socket communication within the front-end is Socket.io, and as such, we'll be using the Golang equivalent in order to ease integrating them together. Now, let's jump into our code editor of choice. Now, for this tutorial, I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code, and I'll leave a link to where you can download that in the description below. Now, what you'll see here is a really simple main.go file that only prints out hello world when we run it, like so. So go run main.go. Now, before we proceed any further, we're going to have to install the Google Lee Go socket IO package from GitHub. So go get github.com slash Google Lee Google. Like that. Go socket.io. That'll go away and install the Go package for us. And we can then subsequently import it using github.com slash googly and go socket IO. Perfect. So let's now expand out our code and create a simple WebSocket server. Now, just quickly, I'm going to alias the import to socket IO like so. Within our main function, we're then going to want to do the following. So server or error is the results of socket IO, socket IO dot new server. And we're going to be passing a nil here. As we're receiving an error, we're going to want to handle that error with if error does not equal nil. And we're going to want to simply log dot fatal that error. Now let's dictate what happens when we have a new connection to our WebSocket server. So server.on and connection is the event name. Within this, we're going to want to pass in an anonymous function that takes in the socket object. So socket.io.socket. And within this anonymous function block, we're going to want to print log.println and we're going to want to do new connection just to verify that when somebody does connect we can see that within our log files okay 
save that. And then we're going to want to set up this server that it will be running on top of. So we're going to use the net.http package. And we're going to do http.handle socket.io and server as the second parameter. And finally, we're going to want to do log log.fatal and http listen and serve. And we're going to want to run this on port 5000 with the second parameter, the handler, as nil. Save that and let's attempt to run it. So go run main.go. And as you can see, this has successfully started up our WebSocket server. So we've got a simple WebSocket server up and running, but let's create a simple index.html file that we'll be able to connect back into our WebSocket server and validate that this is running as intended. So I'm going to create a new static.index.html file and I'm going to copy and paste the front end client from the text version of this tutorial. And again, you'll be able to find that in the description below. As you can see here, it's just a really simple text index.html page and it simply imports the CDN version of the Socket.io library and creates a new Socket connection to localhost 5000, which is the port number that this server is going to be running on top of. Coming back into our main.go file, we're going to want to modify this so that it serves this index.html file. Now to do that, we're going to want to create a new file system handler. And to do that, we do http .new file server http.dir and pass in the static directory that we've just created. Next, we're going to want to tell our HTTP server to handle any requests to the root and allow our file server to handle that and serve whatever files necessary. When we run this again, go run main.go, you should see everything starts up and because I've already got this open, you'll see that the new connection is made within our log files. So we're effectively making a new WebSocket connection whenever we open up our Hello World application in the browser. Perfect. So having a log message appear within your terminal output is fairly boring in the grand scheme of things. It doesn't actually show us what we can do with the Socket.io library. So let's start to extend our WebSocket server so that it can start to handle chat messages to and from the WebSocket connection. So First off, we're going to do so.join and we're going to want to join a chat room. And every time in this chat room that we get a new chat message event, we're going to want to do the following. So open up an anonymous function and this will take in the message as a string. And we're going to want to broadcast to the chat room that we received a chat message and we want to pass that message like so. We're also going to want to log within our console that we received a message from the client. And just within here, we want to do message. Perfect. So come into our index.html so within our index.html, we want to emit a new message or chat message event when we first connect. And the message we're going to want to emit is hello world. Save that and let's restart our WebSocket server. So go run main.go and then let's open up localhost 5000 and hit the refresh button. Once we've done that and we come back into our terminal output, you should see that our WebSocket server has successfully received the message from the client and that message is hello world as expected. So one final thing we're going to want to do is to receive messages within our front end. So socket.on, new chat message and we're going to want to do the following. So func, uh, actually message and we're going to want to just console.log that message like so. 
Perfect. So Control C our, our server and restart it. And then open this up. Inspect the element and within our console, you should see nothing for now, but if I was to duplicate this and open it up again and come back in here, you will see that that has triggered off an event that has then subsequently been broadcast to everybody else in the group. So this first client received an event that another client has connected and it subsequently printed out the hello world message within the console. Excellent. So we've been able to successfully implement two-way WebSocket communication to a client using the Google E Socket IO library in Go. Now, if you wanted to take this further, you certainly could. You could build a fully functioning front-end application using, say, React or Angular or Vue.js. And you could allow that to dictate um, how you handled Socket events. So you could either print them out as chat messages from other people within the room and it would also allow you to do things like dictate exactly what message um, you'd wish to broadcast to the rest of the room but as that's more a front-end tutorial I'm going to leave that for now as always guys if you enjoyed this tutorial then please leave a like and if you've got any further questions let me know in the comments section down below and as always subscribe to my channel for more programming content cheers